Hi, Daily Dosers. My name is Kip Strawbridge, and I'm the campus pastor at our Carlsbad campus here at North Coast. And I remember this one time that my wife and I got in an argument in a fight. And the reason I remember it is actually two reasons. One is because she stopped talking to me, which wasn't normal. Uh, but whatever I had done this time, I'm sure it was my fault. And uh, honey, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, she had gotten mad at me to the point she stopped talking. And it was just cold shoulder, no communication. And I was frustrated because as a thinker, my thought was, if we just keep talking, eventually find the solution. And my wife was, the problem is, is that you're talking. And so she was just like, no more talking. So I, uh, the second reason that I remember this argument particularly was that to kind of break the stalemate that we had of no talking was uh, I had access to some paintball guns and I got two guns, two masks. We drove out to a field. I gave her a mask and gun and I said, she was like, what do I do? I said, shoot me. I was like, you're mad at me, shoot me. And she's like, no. And I was like, well, I'm gonna shoot you. And so we started shooting paintball guns and kind of broke the ice and, and the levity of it allowed us to kind of regain that conversation and we got through our problems, still happily married. And, uh, but that story reminds me of that, like in that time where she wasn't talking to me, that too many times that's what our version of peace looks like is that we weren't actively fighting. We, we, weren't, um, we weren't in conflict in that moment, but there wasn't true peace. Uh, and, and that's the, my warning in this, is that uh, too often we can trade the true peace for a, a harmony, or we get the term that often called people pleasers. We just want everybody to be happy with us. And that's not really what this season that we're talking about, this peace on earth that uh, we're talking about this week. And I want to take two verses and put them next to each other because they, they feel like they contrast, but I think we'll find a truth when we look at both of them. And the first one is at the beginning of Jesus' life, and it's in Luke chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, when the angels are coming to the shepherds in the field. A uh, Christmas story we all are familiar with. It says, Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel that was talking to the shepherds, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those in whom his favor, favor rests. A very familiar King James version of that is, Peace on earth, goodwill toward man. We've all heard that in the holiday season. But at the end of his life, we get this. In Matthew 10, 34, it says, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. And that's Jesus talking to his disciples. And you're like, wait a minute. The angels were like, peace on earth. And now you're like, I didn't come for peace. You know, now did you see Jesus with this sword swinging around? And that's not really what he was saying. What he was saying is, is your version of peace is different than mine. And I think in the same way, that's what uh, I, I found in my wife's and I relationship in that moment was we had a a stalemate or a ceasefire, but it wasn't a true peace. And what Jesus really came to bring is a peace between us and God, not a peace between us and other men. That can come as a result of it, but not until we have a peace with God. Um, there's a quote from a Charles Brent who says this, peace comes when there is no cloud between us and God. Peace is the consequence of forgiveness. I love how he says that, the consequence of forgiveness. He continues to say, God's removal of that which obscures his face and so breaks union with him. And so my challenge to us is this, in this holiday season, uh, especially as we look at this peace on earth and we all pursue peace, are we settling for being people pleasers and keeping harmony or a false sense of peace with others around us? Or are we pursuing a peace with God that only comes for free, from forgiveness? So both of those verses, while they look like they're at odds, are true. The angels proclaimed peace on earth and goodwill toward man. And we see that only in forgiveness between God and a restoration of our relationship that we understand that true peace. And then from that overflows between us and others. And so that's the challenge is uh, Thomas Merton says it this way. We are not at peace with others because we are not at peace with ourselves. We are not at peace with ourselves because we are not at peace with God. And so step one is find that peace with God. And then step two is find that peace with others. And then, as the Bible instructs, that we become peacemakers, not because we're trying to create a false sense of harmony, but because we truly know what peace is, we can become peacemakers, especially in this season of peace on earth. Have a great day, Daily Dosers. We'll see you next time.